Hello everyone and welcome back to another NASCAR Racing 2003 live stream. How is everyone doing today? Thank you very much for joining in. Excuse me. As you can tell by the title of today's video, I am going to be attempting to recreate Danica Patrick's 2013 Kansas first lap crash when she... Which race was this? Like, was it the Hollywood Casino 400? I cannot remember what the name of the race, but it was the October... Uh, 2013 Kansas race. Danica Patrick did not even make it through the first turn. She wrecked. She tried splitting it three wide. Checked up, got loose, and into the outside wall. And also, later today, I am going to be attempting to recreate her 2012 fail when she tried to take out uh, Landon Castle and ultimately failed. She overcorrected and was, sent herself back into the outside wall. And Castle drove through unscathed. So, today, two Danica streams. This is going to be my version of the Danica double. So, if you are a fan of Danica Patrick crashing, you have stumbled onto the right channel and live stream. Thank you so much, guys, for joining right off the bat. If you guys could please hit the like button. If you haven't already, if you are new to my channel and enjoy my videos, be sure to hit that subscribe button. And also, for those of you interested... I am also streaming on Twitch right now. For those of you interested uh, in following me on Twitch, if it's easier for you to watch the streams there, I'm also on Facebook and Twitter. Last but not least, if you would like to help support this channel, please go check out my Patreon page. Thanks so much to Ryan Fitzy, Tommy Joyce, and Jay Barker for your support on there. Really appreciate it, guys. Thank you so much. And without further ado, let's get into today's video. I apologize, I haven't streamed too much for the last... Four or five days. Been a pretty busy week. I thought I'd do something interesting for you guys. Starting off this weekend with the Danica double. Alright. Here we go. Alright. Shoot, I actually wanted to turn the weather to cloudy and the temperature down a little bit since it's October in Kansas. So we're going to turn that down a little bit. And that would also explain why maybe she was a little loose going into that corner. The track is probably really slick because it was probably really cool. Get a little bit of a wind speed going on. Alright, so we're going to do this. We are going to qualify. And I will explain why in a second. Hold on, guys. i got to go blow my nose. I'll be back in like 30 seconds. Much better. Much better. Alright. What was I saying before I was gonna blow my nose? Oh yeah. I'm gonna do a qualifying Robert. session, save the results, and then yeah, like Ryan Fitzy said. Damn it. I thought I changed it from the IndyCar sounds. Alright, we have to exit out real quick. I thought I changed from the IndyCar sounds. Alright, so for anyone interested, because I know I get asked this a lot, there's a thread down below for sim racing design for a whole bunch of different sound packs, a lot of which I have downloaded. So if you look on the right, this is my in-game file in the C drive. Go to the C, Papyrus, NR2003 Season Sound folder. Then here is a backup folder of all my NR2003 files, which is like 80 gigabytes big at this point, the last time I checked. But here is all the sound packs, or various sound packs I downloaded from that uh, folder down below, as well as other places. The sound pack I do, here's what I do. I do Super Speedway Sounds 2.0, copy all these over, paste, and then we want to overwrite this. We have all those backed up, and then... I also take the Z-Chan, the engine sounds, and then copy over the top. Because I like the... I like the tire sounds and the effects and the crash noises of the Super Speedway, but this, uh, the Z-Chan, or Z-Can, however that's pronounced, 4.0 has really good engine sounds, so I use a combo of both. So that is the sounds I use 
for anyone interested, because I know I get asked that a decent amount. Alright, now we should no longer have IndyCar sounds. Alright, so get back into this. Keep the weather settings, everything else the same as we had before. Click back on the chat to make sure that ain't frozen. There we go. Qualify. Let's go in here. We have our cam hack activated so we can zoom in, get the right field of view we want. Right about there. That's pretty good. Just to where the mirror is not covered by the ticker at all. But it's still zoomed in, so it looks more realistic. All right, you know. Just adjust my monitor just slightly. My speakers, make sure everything's set up. Actually, yeah. Scoop my chair, which I took the wheels off of. That's why I kind of have to hop it across the carpet. I have an office chair, but I don't have the wheels on the bottom, so that way I don't roll around. I have to dig it into the carpet. There we go. Now we now we look aligned. Alrighty. Thank you everyone for joining in. That's another thing I was going to do right before I had to blow my nose. I was going to give shout outs in. <clears throat> Lisa Nader's and Cryptic Chaos, Tropical, Cy Tropical Cyclone, Ryan Fitzy, Mike Joy, Jet Meme Sand, Bonzi Hunter, Meme, Sylvie Gang, Cheryl Schackenberg, Mike Joy, I already got you. Cryptic Chaos, I think I already got you. Do, 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 do. Harley Bardot, Traveling Toy Guy, Dominic Trains and Movies, QZ Gamer, how is it going everyone? Brian Scott, forever. <laughs> the goat. Alrighty, let's qualify. I never picked a setup. I'm just using the default setup for this. Am I using the right Kansas, by the way? The 2013 are right. Sorry, I'm a little unprepared. I've been really busy the last week. A little rusty with the streaming. A little rusty Wallace. Alright, sorry. I'll try to have that be my last terrible joke of the video. Oh, no guarantees, though. Alright, setup. Let's try the qualify. Because that's what everyone uses for qualifying, is the qualify setup. Pretty obvious. It's usually a preset setup you uh, develop to get some of the faster individual lap times. Car is really loose. It's meant for a short run. doesn't really matter where we qualify, because we're going to change it in a little bit. Shoot. <laughs> I glanced away from the screen for a second. That is why I'm not a good sim racer. I'm a sim crasher. This is a completely unaltered version of the Kansas 2013. It is exactly how I downloaded it. For anyone wondering. Qualified first on the first lap, but don't get too excited. I have the difficulty only set to like 88. Oh, hit the apron. Oh, we should have spin out there, but... The grip is a little higher in this track than it should be. Or is it? Oh, we are able to spin out there easily. I did that spin on purpose, by the way. I see how easy it would be to get loose going into the first turn. Alright, so despite qualifying near the front like we did here... First, actually. We got under a 29 second lap. We are going to save that. Then we are going to exit out of the game. Abandon race. Yes. And I'll show you why in a second.
save game editor. Run anyway. Alrighty. Sweet. Alright, so I got it loaded up. Alright, so here we got the save game editor, which you can find just by googling NR2003 save game editor. You'll be sure to find a li link that should come up. Alright, C drive, Papyrus, NR2003. If you want to go players, Danica Patrick is the one I'm using. Save game, Kansas. That's what we just used. Alright. Shoot, didn't mean to do that. What I'm trying to do is I want to go back into the wait screen. Why can I not remember? Oh yeah, it's one, not three. Alright, so Kyle Bush is last. I'm just counting this as the very end because it looks like the very end. Even though there's a couple more cars. I'm just having this be the very end. So it was at 78. On the out inside, the 18 on the outside, the 93 and the 13. All right, so first things first. The 18 we want at the very end. Where is Kyle Bush? Here we go. Move down. I think they were towards the back. It only looked like there was a couple cars behind them in that last, in that pack. So I'm just having this be at the very end of the field. All right. So then it was a, it was on the inside the 78. No, that wasn't true. Because that was Kurt Busch, I think. In 2013, duh, he had the infamous rollover. 78, 78, 78. Here we go, Kurt Busch. Move down. Come on down. All right. And then we had the 93. It looked like was that. Cool? Quapple, Rudiman, who was in the 93 at this point? Quapple. Move down to the... To there, and then it was the 13, I believe, on the inside line. Second to last row. We'll get to the crashing in a sec. I just want this lineup towards the end to be 100% accurate, because I... No, everyone always yells at me if any particular AI car, a single one, is out of order in one of my reenactments, so. I'm trying to preemptively shush all those critics up, up, and also improve the quality of my reenactments by being fueled by their criticism. Alright, back to the wait screen so we can see what the. Next couple cars are. Alright, who is that? Got a. Click back on the chat. Minimize the save game editor. And make this bigger. There we go, so we can see this. Alright, who is that? The 32 and the 38. 36. Alright, 32, 38. Bunch of 30s back towards the field. About their same position, too. Alright, back to the save game editor. The 38 was on the outside line. Third to last row. So we'll move him down. And then the 32, Timmy Hill, moved down to the inside line. Inside of David Reagan. David Reagan was on the inside line right there. J.J. Yaley was on the outside line, so we'll move him down. 
these last one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight cars are perfect order so far. All right, go back to the. We're only doing uh, from these cars and uh, back. We're not gonna do the entire field. I'm not gonna go through all that time. All right, who's in front? The 83 and the 30. We're next in line in front of. All right, the 83 and the 30. So I gotta be in front. So now next it's gotta be me, Danica, in front of uh, the 36 of JJ Yaley. Is that the 34? Yeah, 34 on the outside. All right, so now we're moving me back down. Sorry, guys. We're well, almost to the crashing. I think I gotta switch these two. No, I don't. Yes, I do. There's David Reagan on the outside. JJ Yaley on the inside. All right, so next I gotta do whoever is on the outside line in front of Danica. And then me. Alright, so next it's gonna be the 30, and then Danica, and then the 83, and then I think I'll save it and we'll call it good. 30, 10, 83. No. 10, 30, 83. Had that backwards. 10, 30, and then 83. What is up with Danica getting involved with the number 83 car at Kansas? All right, anyone else in front of that I'm not really concerned about. I'm just concerned with all the tail end cars. You see it with that shot right there on the weight screen gif. All right, so we're going to save that. Save, save, save. All right, 35. That means we're on the inside line. All right, exit. Hit number two to bring the game screen back up. Load the game back up. And let's get on to some crashing. I like how I keep rubbing my hands together maniacally at the thought of crashing Danica. I don't know, my all-time favorite football idol, Aaron Rodgers, would not be too thrilled with me right now with this video. Just making sure we're using the right car. Alright, single race, Kansas. All right, cross our fingers right now. I'm going to click it slowly so I'm not rushing my computer that the game does not crash right now when I hit resume save race. Whew. That was close. Kind of glitched out for a second. All righty. I know all the paint schemes might not be right, but from 33rd on back, all the positions are right, at least the order. Try to squeeze up in between uh, Rudiman and the 30 of Stremi. And then that's when I'm going to do the overcorrect, try to hook the 83 and draw him up to the 30 and then go head on into the outside wall. 
I just realized I'm not using a setup, but it shouldn't matter if I'm crashing literally in the first turn. Alright, so far so good. Darn it. The 83 was going way too fast. Holy crap. And we are upside down on the first attempt without even trying. The 83 was powering through that turn. I didn't have a chance to get to clip him. I agree with you, Pantelico. A lot of Danica's infamous wrecks were not her fault. This one was, and the Landon Castle one was. But the one involving Amarola and Joey Logano at, uh... Alright, restart. Danner. Chat froze. Did I forget to click back on the chat? Alright, there we go. I should have saved that one, but we'll probably have more flips. And for those of you wondering about the yellow stripe, the rookie stripe, I was wondering about that too. Because technically she was driving in 2012, and she had the uh, rookie stripe then, and 2013 was obviously the second year. But if you look really closely at the replay, she's got a yellow stripe in this wreck on the back of her car, so I don't know. Some sort of technicality? Is it, some, is it part of the design of the car? Alright, so I gotta try to get on the outside of the 83 a little bit quicker, or I gotta exit out of the game and turn his stats for, uh, out of this race session and turn his uh, stats down a little bit so he doesn't accelerate quite so quickly. Hey, look at that. We wrecked before we even crossed the start-finish line on the first lap. <laughs> what if Danica Patrick wrecked even sooner in Kansas 2013? <laughs> Alright, that one was completely my fault. Yeah, that uh, bad one at Daytona wasn't her fault. There's a couple guards that got together in front of her and sent her uh, into that inside wall. Still one of the biggest crashes. That's what I thought, that she didn't run full time in 2012. That's what I figured. But one of her biggest crashes that no one ever talks about because someone else flipped during it was the Matt Kenseth rollover in 2016 at uh, Talladega. If you look at how she hits that wall when uh, Kenseth is flipping, it's really similar to the Eric McClure crash from like four years earlier. Back here, 83. All right, sadly, that was the closest one yet, but that's not good at all. These cards are... checking up a little too much. I think I needed to turn their difficulty down even more. Actually... Maybe just the 83. He's going a little too fast through that first turn. There's another one that not too many people have, uh, uh, talk, talked about because I've only seen it a few times. I can never remember the race. It was somewhere uh, between 2010 and 2012. I believe it was it was a night Xfinity race at Daytona. There's a small pileup, and she was one of the cars. She went uh, got sent to the inside wall, and when she hit the inside wall head on, it hit so hard, the steering wheel got pushed up to where she was like holding the wheel like this. Like, the steering wheel got pushed up, like, almost to the ceiling. Because the impact pushed up the steering column. That one was a scary one, too. Can I remember the race that that happened in? Nope. 
I think I'm gonna exit out, turn the 83 stats down a little bit. No, ooh, here we go. 83. Gonna turn your acceleration down. All right, save. All right, it was 2012. All right, so I did did get the the span of years correct. Yes, please don't crash. Please don't crash. Thank you. Thank you. All right, let's try this again. We got the Dirt Today Tone of View going on with the really zoomed out chase cam, but I'm doing that so I can see the full mirror, even with the even with the ticker up there. It's one downside to this game. I wish you could adjust the camera view with cam hack, but keep the mirror where it's at so the mirror doesn't get blocked by a by a ticker. Hopefully 83 is a little bit slower going into that corner because I need him to be more alongside of the 30. Alright, I messed that one up. That one was my fault. Whoa! What the heck happened there? I just hit a sweet spot on the wall and just ramped. And my car is still drivable. The caution hasn't come out yet, and I have a failed attempt. You know what that means. Backwards big one. Logano was kind of propped up on the wall and avoided getting hit by most of the pack. Man, that was an insane sequence from start to finish with this attempt. Let's go back to Danica flying into the catch fence. I was just trying to practice the spin just to spin myself out and then I get hit by the 38. Sends me with a little bit more momentum into the wall. I didn't hit quite at the right angle. But then holy Danica... Batman <laughs> and once again right there that caution light would have gone right through her car or one of her windows please NASCAR get rid of caution lights not the physical concept or the concept of caution lights but the physical sharp metal objects jutting out from the catch fence is what I'm talking about before someone else dies from those alright then let's go back to the backwards big one that I almost forgot about <coughs> Yeah, let's watch Joey Logano. I hit him, and he's just, like, sitting up on the wall. Avoids getting hit by most of them, and then... Jeez. Old cousin Carl just sends him into oblivion. Let's watch this from, uh, Carl Edwards' point of view. Who's in the 21 at this time? I can't remember. I'll have to see in a second. Bam! 21. Trevor Bain, 20 years old, that's right. Next! How is it going, everyone? One Spicy Boy, Awesome Michael, 33, Cito Brown, Traveling Toy Guy, Mike Head, Bonzi Hunter, I already got you, Crypto Chaos, I already got you, TNT Productions. Oh, that's right, gotta get going. Looks like my car's behind me. Guess what, guys? It is 15 days basically on the dot until 
the 2018 IR12 Arrow Kit IndyCar mod gets released. Basically, all the paint schemes have been assigned now. About 75% of them are done. The last one I'm working on, Zach Beach, is about 95 to 98% done. I'm just doing the last uh, bit of details on the helmet, the suit. And I'm just waiting for one more picture of a contingency I can't really get a good view of to come out. Alright, here we go, the 83. Come on, come back here. Sadly, that one wasn't terrible, but definitely no good. I need to hit the... I need to hit the outside wall at, like, the same angle that Regan Smith did in 2012 or 13, whatever year that was. What was that? No. It was 2012. Yeah. Whatever, whenever that was. When he hit the wall really hard at Talladega, just so hard that your back end just comes up off the ground. I need to hit it at that angle. And that one was not correct, so next. I'm trying to think of what else. I've noticed two minor things with the IndyCar mod I need to post on the page. Yeah, I'm so excited for that to come out. So excited for you guys to see that mod looks amazing. I put so many damn hours into my four p cars I painted. Oh yeah, my 10 year anniversary on YouTube. <laughs> Although like six or seven of those shouldn't count. I st started out my YouTube channel way back then, did a few videos here and there, and then from about 2011, 2012, to about 2016. I didn't really do much of anything. I just wish I discovered this format for my uh, channel long ago. I'd probably have 100,000 subscribers by now if I started doing this around 2010, 2012. And I just think back to all the crazy moments that have happened since then that I could have been live streaming or recording my reactions for like the Austin Dillon wreck I remember crapping my pants watching Carl Edwards go into the catch fence live do a stream just messing around with the settings I have done that haven't I oh yeah there's another mod coming out in the somewhat near future, I don't know quite when, that I was asked to be a tester for that I am super excited about. I think you guys will be super excited about. It's by an amazing group that have already created a handful of amazingly detailed mods that have great damage and just look amazing inside and out. I think you guys know what I'm talking about. I don't know if you know the mod, but I know you probably know the group I'm talking about. The group that released the Winston 98 and the Monster Energy Cup 2017 and 2018 mods. Darn it. There's something in the wall right there that makes me want to climb the wall. Let's see if I can land on my side. Oh, darn it. Darn it, and there's a caution out, so I can't do a backwards big one because it's going to be slowed down by the time they get to the back stretch. Yes, my old channel name was Sabbath Bass Dude. Because I, I mean, I still do every now and then. I have a bass, I play bass. Not nearly as much as I used to. I don't have too much free time anymore. Sabbath was and still is one of my favorite bands of all time. 
And I guess when I was, uh, like 10, when I initially put, or like, no, it was 12. I was like 11 or 12 when I made my initial Sabbath base dude channel, which I didn't really post anything. I think I just had that as a user. For that reason, I think it just became inactive. I didn't use it for a while, and then that one got deleted. And what year would that be? Around 2000, or 2004. Yes? No? No. And then around 2008, yeah. 2008. So I made Sabbath Base Dude 14. And then, yeah, once I started started up with this channel again, me rambling and I messed up this attempt. Once I started up with this channel again and I got way more serious with it, wanted to change the name to something a little bit univer more universal, something that suits what I do a little bit more, and I came up with what I have now. Holy crap, poor Jeff. And we got... Casey Mears tumbling upside down. Kyle Bush went upside down the same way he did, uh, kind of in Daytona 2014-15, whenever that was. Alright, let's go on board with Jeff Corwin. <laughs> That's what one of my friends always called Jeff Gordon. He would always call him Jeff Corwin, just wrong on purpose, because he knew it. That, uh, old, uh, kind of Steve Irwin guy, that nature guy. That wasn't quite as popular as Steve Irwin, obviously. Some Gordon minding his, nose and minding his own business. Just traveling along. That's what's going to happen. Oh my goodness. Bam. I don't think he ever quite flipped over during that whole time. He was just up in the air. And where's the 13 that goes airborne? Right here. I think. Oh no, it was the 30, excuse me, not the 13. That got sent tumbling and then into Kyle Bush. He got hit by Timmy Hill in the 32. <laughs> Next. Jeff Corwin. <laughs> I need to I need to make that meme now. I forgot about that inside joke. I don't know if I've even mentioned that on this channel yet. Yeah, one of my friends was a good buddy through elementary school, middle school, and high school. Unfortunately, towards the end of high school, he had to move back where he was originally from in Michigan. Oops. I believe second year, not using the clutch properly. But I still get to see him every year or so. It's been like two years now since I saw him last, but... I'll get out there soon, or he'll come out here soon. But yeah, that... <laughs> For as long as I can remember, he's always just jokingly called Jeff Gordon and Jeff Corwin. I'm just going to try to get a decent running start because the second gear is busted. Nope. Nope. Oh, come on, third. Have the turbo kick in. Turbo button. Boom. Nope, it didn't work. Alright, since I screwed this one up again... I'll make a compromise. If I screw up an attempt and I don't get it through the first turn, I'll just keep doing this. I almost missed everyone in that, somehow. I only got... Greg Biffle, Dave Blaney, it looked like Trevor Bain got caught up too. 20 years old. Man, how did Kenseth miss me? I think he just barely got clipped. Was this when Kenseth was still in the 17, or did Stenhouse take over by now? It was Stenhouse. Never mind. I thought Kenseth might have still been in the 17 by now. By now. Or then. Excuse me. Time flies. Seems like it was just a few years ago Kenseth was still in the 17. Holy kittens. Next. 
The bug-eyed dummy. I didn't want to be the first one to say it, but yes, the old Sterling Marlin quote. <laughs> second gear. I don't actually pay attention this time. For this one, just letting you guys know I'm going to stream for about an hour and a half. So we're nearing the halfway point of this one. We'll go to around uh, 3.30, 3.40 my time, central time. Do a little bit of math based on whatever time zone you're in. <laughs> I said you're in. Whoa! I'm not certain, but I'm pretty sure one car just got stuck in the safer barrier and went from like 150 to zero in a millisecond and literally got stuck impaled in the safer barrier. I think it might have been the, eight, the 83 or the 95. Yeah, the 83 just got completely stuck in the safer barrier. Let's go on board, her. Let's go on his chase cam. Holy crap. Yikes. Those whoppers are scrambled. Those chicken fries are all smashed up. Holy crap. Next! David Rudiman's had some bad wrecks over the years, but this is one of the hardest ones I've ever seen. Let's take a quick commercial break and we'll be right back. Introducing the new Flame Grilled Cheddar Bacon Whopper. We are back where the hard wreck continues with David Rudiman. He is still impaled into the safer barrier. <laughs> Hold your line, Yaley. And that puts his California wreck on the Watkins Glen flipped a shame. Once again, I hit that sweet spot in the wall where I'm just ramping up off of it. <laughs> it happens every now and then with uh, certain tracks. There's a sweet spot in the wall and certain parts of the turn where you can just ramp off of it. Happened again. Casey Mears airborne as well. Casey Mears got airborne and kinda looks like how Brad Kozlowski did at California minus getting additionally hit while he was airborne by another car and sent onto the safer barrier. That's another one I'd need to try to recreate at some point. The Brad Keselowski wreck at California back from 2007, I believe. Was that the Nationwide series then, or was it still the Bush? <laughs> I can never remember when all the... when all the primary name sponsors for the different series switched over. I know it was the Winston Cup series through the 2003 season. It's crazy to think, not more than 15 years ago, a cigarette company was still the primary NASCAR sponsor. And it switched to Nextel briefly, and then Sprint took over, and now we here we are with the Monster Energy NASCAR Cup series. 
And I finally remember how to say that right. Everything in the right order. Because you want to say the NASCAR Monster Energy Cup Series, but no, it's the Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series. Who decided that? I don't know. Same darn thing. That's going to mess up a perfect attempt. One of these days. One of these days, Alice. Alright. I'm making references that are even before, way before my time. Jeez. Up and over. Is that Clint Boyer in the 33? No, Landon Castle. Another Danica fail while trying to take out Castle <coughs> at Kansas. Landon Kans... Oh. <laughs> what? Alright. Next! In the truck it was easy, it was just the Craftsman to the Camping World Truck Series. Was it anything before the Craftsman? Because I believe, if I'm not mistaken, it wasn't the Truck Series developed in like 95? Somewhere around there was the inaugural season. I never know how to pronounce that word right. Inaugural. There we go. Has it always been Craftsman or was it something... Was it just the NASCAR Truck Series until the early 2000s? Or was Craftsman on board from the beginning or did they take over sometime later? Move over, Stremmy. I need to fit in here. Whoa! Holy crap, that one's getting saved. What if Danica's Kansas crash is way worse? Which Kansas wreck are you talking about? She's had 20 of them. <laughs> well, at least I make myself laugh. <laughs> Jeez. Saving that one. <laughs> Old school NASCAR, what's up? Golden Corral. <laughs> That'd be hilarious. so silent between the attempts now so I took everyone's suggested and suggestion and turned the spotter audio off oh it's changing from the camping world trucks to the gander outdoors is that like the gander mountain store we had one of those near our near where I am but then it just recently closed down one of my red t-shirts I have I got there <laughs> we're going out of business sale it was like two dollars for a t-shirt that kind of fit me so I was like why not <laughs> right, come on let's do this nope too early too early Oh my gosh, someone flipped. I think my car is still good enough to where I can do a BBO. I think I can probably beat them to the line. No, probably not. I 
There we go. That's a proper backwards big one. Even slowing down for the caution lap is still pretty big. Oh. 30 almost flipped before I did. Spectator. Can we get a good view here? Here we go. This will be a good view. Holy Logano. Looks like Dale Jr. upside down. I don't think Logano ever actually flipped. He just went a helicopter in after drilling that outside wall while airborne. Alright, next. The NASCAR Walmart Cup Series. <laughs> How come they haven't had that yet? Let me go back to cigarettes for their primary sponsor. The Marlboro Cup Series. Watching a bunch of Ayr and Santa clips in the recent days, so I can't say Marlboro without having that white and red car come to mind of his. The legend. Oh, I just missed him. Alright, I guess we're going into turn three really hot again. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Oh my gosh, no one flipped. Alright, that one's not even worth a replay. It would just be a waste of time. That I could be doing a good attempt with. Faceless Nas 64. Who else hasn't gotten one yet? Kaz Grala, oh my gosh. <laughs> So in about a half an hour, 35 minutes or so, I'm going to wrap this one up. I'm going to try to shower quickly before I end. I partially updated the description for the new one. I need to switch over the stream settings. Update the weight screen thumbnail and GIF, which I already made. I'll just make sure all the in-game settings are switched over for the new one. That one I'm probably just going to do in practice mode, since all the cars are spread out at that point. Darn it, I was accidentally in third gear, meant to be in second. Alright, next. That one doesn't even... That one was a joke. Like Danica's racing resume, that was a joke. I know I'm going to be beating an already beaten dead horse, but that post-race or post-wreck interview after, uh, after uh, Eric Amarola's and hers and Joey Logano's wreck at Kansas last year, that really, really annoyed me. How she was sitting there huffing and puffing and, I mean, I understand frustration. But she was sitting there saying... Oh, I'm trying to focus on this. Just focusing on how bad of luck she has and how everything goes wrong for her and 
nothing can go right for her and how how bad this race is for her and me 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 meanwhile there's someone with a broken back being cut out of their car and I gotta say for her in the an argument of her bad luck claim yeah she's had some bad racing luck over the years but fact is if you look at her racing resume how little success success she's had with it versus how long she's been in the sport and how much money she's made from all the advertising and endorsements and sponsorships and contracts and all that doesn't sound pretty unlucky I mean, with a racing resume where anyone else would have been gone five years ago her being one of the richest drivers in the sport purely just from all her endorsements and sponsorships from being a gimmick I don't know yeah in races she's had not some great luck but I don't know I wouldn't call that very unlucky if you ask me to be one of the richest women in sports imaginable despite your very little amount of success in said sport but that's just me that's my two cents that's probably worth one and a half no 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 I'm gonna go flipping yep I knew I was gonna hit that spot in the wall again the sweet spot and then the 30 came and got his revenge Oh no, I think it was Scott Speed in the 95 I initially took out. Giant Furball 3432. I don't know if I've ever seen you at these videos yet. Welcome, and thank you for joining. Yeah, exactly. As Eric Amarillo with a broken back, not sure the extent of the injury, being cut out of his car and being flown to a hospital, and then meanwhile Danica is basically huffing and puffing, why does everything bad happen to me? Meanwhile, you're one of the richest women in sports, with all due respect, not being very decent, or, I don't know, can't say she's a bad driver, you're not... You're not a bad driver if you can get to a professional motorsports level and handle one of these cars without crashing on a lap-to-lap -lap basis for the most part. So she's not a bad driver, but she does not to be in where she was. She wanted to stay like in the Indy Light series or something like that. What is the 36 doing? Oh, he has to pit for some reason. Thirty-six was messing me up. So now I, this attempt got ruined from him. I wasn't able to get behind the eighty-three. All right, next. Yeah, just don't say you're horribly unlucky and everything bad happens to you, and you're just rolling in wealth despite having very little success in the sport you're known for. I mean, if you think about it, she's kind of like the... <laughs> she's like the female Jay Cutler of NASCAR. Just, she's had little bits, tiny bits of success here and there, just little flashes of uh, promise but never actually really done anything with their career, yet somehow became one of the richest at their position. And it's always kind of has a huffy puffy, just really bad attitude, just doom and gloom about everything. <laughs> <She's> <laughs> Whoa, we got a smoker. We got a smoker. The seven. Yeah, she's like the female Jay Cutler of her sport. Being a diehard Packers fan, Jay Cutler holds a special spot in my heart. <laughs> he was basically the twelfth man for the Packers at the time of him be being on the Bears. I'm speaking of Jay Cutler. I know I'm. I'm not gonna talk too long, but random football pondering. 
Christian Ponder. Jay Cutler re-signed with the Dolphins to get more money, obviously, one. And two, I'm sure he... I mean, weather-wise, I'm sure Miami is probably a hell of a lot better than living in Chicago. The windy, cold city versus, hey, nice, warm, sunny paradise. With all the old people. God's waiting room, as, <laughs> as people call it. But, uh... He probably thought re-signing with the Dolphins and the AFC team... He's like, oh, sweet. I can play football some more, but I'm probably never going to have to face the Packers and Aaron Rodgers again. Well, guess what? The Packers play the Dolphins next year. So Jay's got to decide if he wants to retire or if he wants to go another year, get another year's worth of money, but have to face the Packers yet once more in his career that he thought he'd probably never have to do again. Darn it. Next. That one wasn't good. What's his face got in the way? The 13, I believe. Why am I way behind on my phone? Here we go. Old school NASCAR is a Bears fan. I would have never guessed that. Now I just need to find a motorsports YouTuber or racing gaming YouTuber that's a, a Vikings fan and then one that's a Lions fan. And then we can have the, the NFC North rivalry within the NASCAR racing gaming YouTubing community. <laughs> the Vikings, they're done. If they can't do anything this year with Kirk Cousins, they basically signed away their entire future to get Kirk Cousins. Darn it, the 36 got in the way of that one, possibly being decent. Yay, rollover. Oh my gosh, someone flipped. Yeah, a lot of their... A lot of Minnesota's key defensive players that the team is basically built around all have contracts running out in the next upcoming couple of years. And with how much money they gave to Kirk Cousins, there is no way they're going to be able to re-sign every single defensive player they've got once they become free agents, so the purple people eaters are kind of going to become the way of the Seahawks, where they were really good, had a really good decent f defense for a few years, but they almost became too good for their own good, and now everyone got so good they're wanting big contracts, and once their contract runs up, they're going to want to ask a lot of money that the team doesn't have and then go to a different team. And holy cow, where's Kozlowski? He was tumbling about a zillion times in this one. Mitchell Collins. How is it going? I should take a visit up to Lambeau sometime in the summer for training camp. Maybe I get to see that Josh Alexander. Or no. Josh Jackson, Josh Jackson, Josh Jackson, and Jair Alexander. So many J's. The damn uh, secondary for the Packers. They've got Josh Jones, Josh Jackson, and now Jair Alexander, or Jair, however it's pronounced. Hopefully the Packers' defense will be crappy no more. Or at least not as bad as it's been. See you later, Cheryl Schreckenberg. I'm gonna get going in about 20, 25 minutes or so, so I can quickly shower and then switch all the settings over for the next stream. Darn it. Another flip. 
Oh my gosh, another flip. Try to beat them back to the line. For the backwards big one. Definitely not gonna beat him. Jeez. I got Keslowski once again. And come summertime, I am going to make sure I have plenty of data on my phone beforehand. And I'm going to go to Slinger at least two or three times this year. And then try to record videos with my really nice DSLR camera, like I've done in the past, and also try to live stream some stuff while I'm at Slinger. And, if all goes well with my finances, if these weddings that I have coming up to, as a video gig, uh, don't fall through, as long as I keep making a decent amount of money with my other jobs, I should, come June and then August, be going to the IndyCar race at Road America, and then the Xfinity race in August at Road America. I'm really excited for that. Any car race is going to be about 60 bucks, <coughs> and the uh, Indy car race is going to be 60 bucks, and then the Xfinity race is going to be 50 bucks. It's cheaper, and not only do you get the Xfinity race, the Super Stadium trucks are going to be racing there on the same day after the Xfinity race. How awesome is that? So basically, two two races for the price of one ticket at one of the country is more cool uh, road courses, if you ask me, that I just so happen to live like an hour away from, that I've ever, never actually been to before. That one wasn't... That was no good. It seems like there's too much traffic. I think when I do this, if I try a part two for this one in the future, I think I gotta do the spacing distance a little bit more, or the pacing distance, so the cars are a little bit more spread out when the green flag goes. Train Rainbow, how's it going? Cole Byrne, Rick Allen. So yeah, in addition to trying to go to Slinger a few times, I'm going to try to get to Road America for both the Xfinity Series and the IndyCar race in August for Xfinity and then June for the IndyCar, which is... That is next month already. I gotta, I gotta set aside money for those tickets for my next paycheck or with my next paycheck. So yeah, I gotta buy those tickets soon. Still got some time for the Xfinity race. And Road America's weird. Apparently, it doesn't really have any. Except for a suite or two. Doesn't really have any formal seating. Kind of just bring a chair and pick a corner and sit down on the lawn. All right. I wasn't in good position to try to hook myself on the 83 on this attempt. Jeez. Greg Biffle just got demolished. Same with Marcus Ambrose. As he tumbles down the banking in turn four. Ends up on his lid. And, if I have time and I can afford it, I'm also try to gonna go down to Wilmot Raceway. Down near the Lake Geneva area, which is in like the very south southern border of Wisconsin, near Illinois. Wisconsin! So if I have time and money, I'm going to try to go to at least six races locally this year. Try to get to at least three Slinger, the two at Road America, IndyCar, and Xfinity, and then try to get to one at Wilmot. Slinger's only like 10 bucks admission, and it's like 30 minutes away from my place. I love it. It's one of the... Being completely unbiased, it's one of the better short tracks out there, if you ask me, in the country. Up there with Bowman Gray and Wall.
one of the more historic ones too. If you look, uh, if you search on my channel right now, or if you just YouTube search Slinger Speedway Wall of Champions or Slinger Wall of Champions, it's a video I posted from the last time I went there to show in the, the champion board from over the years. There's some recognizable names that have raced at Slinger over the years that you guys will recognize. Come on, come on. Stupid Yaley getting in the way. Whoa, we got four cars up in the air. I think I'm going to have to use a different version of Kansas for part two if I ever do this again. There's something with this turn two wall, if we hit it in the right spot, we just go launch it into the air. Dremi, the 83, and whoever that was. Yaley and Rudiman around. Looks like Yaley has a rare crash where he landed on his side. It doesn't happen too often in these games. In this game. Next! Alright, about another 10 15 minutes. I know I haven't been the most focused with this one. Hopefully I'll have a little bit better luck with the next one that I'm going to do in about two hours or so. A little less. Hour 45. If you guys haven't noticed, I'm trying to do these streams a little bit longer. I'm trying to go at least an hour and a half, two hours now, but the only reason I'm doing this one is so short, just so I can, I can have enough time to set up for the next stream I want to do and have that one done before, within my window, before I need to uh, be gone and doing things later tonight. I.e. work. <laughs> Gosh, someone flipped. Oh my. <laughs> green flag, green flag. Green, green, green. Someone needed to say it since the spotter ain't here. Whoa, whoa. Darn it. Yaley keeps getting in the way. Yeah, I think if I do a part two, I'm probably going to have to have the AI pacing distance be a little bit more so the cars are a little bit more spaced out on the start. Some of these, the lead up has been decent, but when I make the contact and try going up to the outside wall, there's just always a car in the way in the outside lane. Did Yaley hit the catch fence? Looked like he, like his back end got into the fence and he shot back out to the track really quickly. Oh yeah, that's exactly what he did. They keep hitting that caution light. Call me paranoid, but I really need to make a video to send a NASCAR explaining my reasoning of why they should get rid of the physical caution lights up on the catch fence in lieu of just a... Maybe some big, like, billboard signs in the, uh, infield, like, already past the catch fence. Just three or four on the back stretch, the front stretch, and, like, and, like the turns. Like a big blinking yellow screen that'll pop up. Instead of the big, sharp metal objects just jutting out from the catch fence, waiting to go through a windshield again. Did David Stremme win the 500 three times? Is that true? I need to look that up. Come here, Rudiman. David Tudeman. Oh, darn it. He went through the turn too fast. Oh, yeah, now you spin. I see how it is. Took out the 83 and that 93, and the 93. I forgot what what team it was, but that racing team probably ain't too happy with me. All right, yeah, I can't do a backwards big one because the yellow flag is out. Got a 
start. I'm not taking such long gaps, so many days without streaming. If I go a few days without streaming, my audience isn't nearly as big for them. I have about 20, 30 watchers this whole time. I need to pump those numbers up. Matthew McConaughey and Wolf of Wall Street, you gotta pump those numbers up. I'll make it three times a day. <laughs> and I'm gonna stop right there. Oh my goodness. There are two cars impaled into the catch fence and just hovering there. Scott Speed and I believe it was Rudiman. Oh, it's a Griff Dog reference. I mean, as much as I think I know about racing, I am not an encyclopedia by any means, so someone could have told me that Stremmy won the 500 three times and I could have believed it until I looked it up myself. <laughs> The 95 and the 83, yeah, watch this. They just get to that part near the, just past the caution light and just get stuck. Let's go on board with the three-time Daytona 500 winner, David Stremme. And yes, I have seen those Griff Dog videos. I, I don't know if I've seen that particular one. I can't remember the David Stremme reference, but I have seen some of those. I'm definitely going to have to do a different version of Kansas that doesn't have that ramping effect on the wall right there. Scott Speed. Godspeed, Scott Speed. Godspeed, Spider Man. <laughs> Peter. Don't tell Harry. <laughs> Me and an old friend of mine used to make fun of that, uh, that part of sp the original Spider-Man. <laughs> I don't know why it made us laugh so much. Ah, uh, the Green Goblin impales himself with the glider at the very end. I got to talking about Spider-Man, but that just goes to show you how short my attention span is. Oh yeah, because Scott Speed with that bad crash, and I said Godspeed. And then that reminded me of that quote that he says right before he tries taking out Peter or Spider-Man with the glider, but then misses and takes himself out. Godspeed, Spider-Man. <laughs> that dude's that actor William Defoe is that that actor's name I'm it's funny I I've been into film all my life and I do wedding videos for a part of my living but I'm not great with actors Scott speed up into the catch fence again Scott Speed, two crashes in a row. Stuck in the catch fence. Godspeed, Scott Speed. <laughs> I feel like that's going to be a new meme. That was a... Uh, that was like James Franco, too, before everyone knew who James Franco was. That was before he really got famous. Now he's doing everything. Now he's pretending to be Tommy Wiseau in movies that he's winning awards for. He's winning awards making movies about behind the scenes of other movies that were terrible unintentionally. <laughs> Whoever would have thought you could make an, or win an award with a movie like that. The Disaster Artist. I'm still yet to see that. But I love James Franco, so I got to.
I was never too huge in like superhero movies growing up, but the Spider-Mans I did see. I mean, who didn't see the Spider-Man movies? Uh-oh, problems with Junior. Junebug, what are you doing? Holy cow, what is he doing? Darn it. I missed the 83 again. I got taken out. By Kurt Busch. Yeah, taken out by Rowdy's brother, Loudy. <laughs> it's Rowdy and Loudy. Because he's loud on the radio. I guess Kyle Busch is too, but... Kurt Busch is a little bit no more notorious for his uh, radio freakouts, but Kyle Busch is probably getting up there. I've had such little focus this entire video, I apologize. I've just realized that I've, I've kind of just given hope on uh, the attempts at this point, especially now that we're five minutes towards the end of the video. I mean, mainly because anytime I've gotten a decent one, I either hit that turn two wall and just ramp up, or I get hit by someone else in the outside lane. No, loudy with a U. Like, loud. As in he's yelling very loud. Yeah, L-O-U-D-Y. It's loudy and rowdy. Oh, darn it. Once again, that was going to be decent, except I hit a car in the outside wall and ramped up. And now I'm on Timmy Hill's hood. He's going to charge me fair for that ride. Like how, oh, what was that dude saying? That Bob, Bob Packress, whatever that uh, reporter's name is. I think it was like 2012, 2013 when he asked Kurt Busch a question. He was like, it, something, something that I don't punch you in the face. <laughs> I mean, the reporter asked a dumb question, just trying to stir up drama. I mean, yeah, it was kind of out of line to say I'm going to punch you in the face, but he, he didn't raise his voice. He didn't like get physical with him. He didn't make it seem like he was actually going to punch me. He just kind of said that as a retort. I don't know. I thought Kurt Busch keep just kept his cool in that situation, but didn't he get, like, suspended and fined for that? Ba Pacres, yeah. Or whatever his name is. And that was around the time, too, when there was that stuff going on with his at-the-time girlfriend, which I'm not going to get into. Probably gonna be the third to last attempt. Oh, come on. No, I was actually gonna be heading towards the wall. Decent Timothy King of the Hill got in the way. God damn it, Timmy. That boy ain't right. There is a guy named Bob Hill, though, that had a rollover way back when, I believe, in the Arca series that I need to try to recreate at some point. In. God knows that King of the Hill reference is going to be said probably 20 gajillion times. God damn it, Bobby. And we got Tony Stewart. Smoke is up in smoke, tumbling over and over again. All right, second to last attempt. I mean, Kurt Busch got suspended for that. But correct me if I'm wrong, but did Carl Edwards not get suspended for that, uh... That incident way back when with, uh... Matt Kenseth? Where he dragged him out of an interview, grabbed him by the neck, and then lit actually threatened to punch him just to get, like, a physical reaction out of him? And how does Kurt Busch get suspended for just simply without raising his voice, without getting physical or anything? Eh, yeah, refrain, Rafe. I'm not punching you in the face. How does he get suspended from that? But I don't know. Carl Edwards could have gotten suspended for all I know. 
I just don't remember hearing about it. You guys remember that? Wasn't that at Bristol, I think? When Cousin Carl dragged Matt Kenseth out of an interview and grabbed him by the neck or collar for a little bit and then as he's backing off, like, threatened to wind up and punch him to get, like, a flinching reaction. Tony Stewart made me smell my soda cookies. Don't you mean your Whoppers? Oh, probation. What does that even mean? Probation. So I can't jokingly say, hey, don't say that I will punch you in the face. Without actually really meaning it. Otherwise you'll get in trouble. Rules, schmools. Dale? What are you doing here? Aren't you supposed to be... I don't know where you're supposed to be doing. Whatever they do up there. Whatever's going on up there. Whatever kind of races you and Neil and Ayrton and all the other late great racers are doing up in the great beyond. Alright, final attempt and then one last backwards big one even though I've done 20 gajillion so far this video. I'm going to shower quickly. Set up for the next stream and hopefully be live again in about an hour and a half from now. My version of the Danica Double. Back-to-back -back Danica Crash Dreams on... On the same day... On this month... Of May... This is May... <laughs> oh god... I feel bad for laughing at that joke... Alrighty, last attempt. Can we get a perfect one here? Or is the Danica Kansas 2013 first lap crash gonna have to wait till a part two for a proper reenactment? We'll, we'll tell in about five seconds. No! Alright, we're gonna have to redo that. David Hoots. I beat you guys to the reference. Whoa! There was a crash way back when that kind of looked like that. I'm going to try that again because I messed the thumb up. But you don't see how it started, but you just see how it ends. It's Eric McClure. I forgot at which track, but he's on the safer barrier sliding backwards with his right side, or his left side, excuse me, pitched up in the air, sliding backwards, and then he comes back down on all fours. If not mistaken, I think Pascal did a reenactment of that. There's some really cool, obscure wrecks that haven't, that aren't really too heard of, that I discover for the first time or I see for the first time in a long time, that I think, oh man, I want to try to do a reenactment of that. Then I realize Pascal's already done it. It's like, damn, he beat me to it. If I try that now, it's gonna be like I'm copying him. He's about six years before me with all the reenactments. I did a few here and there, not nearly to the level I do now, but my Elliot Sadler one, the Carl Edwards one, that's basically it. My two terrible reenactments from back in like the late, or the early 2010s, like 2011, 2012, I think I posted those. Alright, now this is the last attempt. Now with the David Hood, Hoots reference, I'm just reminded of... I don't know if Ryan Fitzy made the picture or not, but... He... Tweeted it to me on Twitter. A picture of, uh... David Hoots' head on an owl's body. <laughs> Come on. Holy... Shnikes. And we got J.J. Yaley upside down. And he comes to rest on his wheels. Man, Danica just... 
did a Danica double backside 540 in that spin in the air. That was almost a 540. All right, so she hits the wall at that angle. All right, so that's a 180. There's the 360. And then, no, nope, she came down right between the 360 and the 540. All right, a true backwards big one, and then I got to get going. Thank you guys so much for watching up to this point. I really appreciate it. If you haven't hit the like button yet, please just go ahead and do so if you enjoyed the video. If you happen to be new to my new to my channel, happen to stumble upon these videos and you enjoyed, be sure to hit that subscribe button. And after you subscribe, hit that little bell button that comes up afterwards. That's how you get the live uh, stream notifications for when I schedule them, I believe. So that's what I've uh, experienced and been, been told, at least. And obviously with all the live streaming I do on this channel, that's mainly what I do. You want to make sure you get those live notifications. And if there's anyone that's already subscribed that hasn't done that yet and you're wondering why you don't get notified when I schedule one, that's, that might be why. So be sure to hit that little bell button down where the subscribe button is after you subscribe. Please and thank you, everyone. And like all good backwards big ones in the final part of the video, I'm going to try going down pit road the wrong way and then get them as they're coming out of turn four. Hopefully I timed this good. Oh no, I missed. I literally just got one car of Landon Castle and I missed everyone else. That's going to have to be done again. David Hoots. <laughs> David Toots. <laughs> oh god. I'm just thinking of the photoshops. Put David Hoots' head on David Rudeman's body. David Hoodeman. Or vice versa. David Root. I'm just picturing someone like... <laughs> Photoshopping David Hoots onto a tree. David Root. I'll put him in the band, The Roots. Black flag. Black flags matter. like some proper destruction right there. Maybe like 10 or so cars got through completely unscathed. Alrighty, let's take a look at that before we get skedaddling out of here. Yes, I just said skedaddle. Alright guys, that is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Whoa, the 43 was flying through the air. Please hit the like button and subscribe if you are interested in following me on Twitch. I stream there if it's more convenient for you to watch the streams on Twitch versus YouTube. For those of you also interested, I am on uh, social media, Facebook, Twitter. Links are all down below. And last but not least, if you want to help support this channel, please go check out my Patreon page. Thank you so much to Ryan Fitzy, Tommy Joyce, and Jay Barker for your support on there. Anything from getting a shout-out in the description of all my videos to having me sent you a a Cody H Gaming sticker, which I have on my wheel right here. I don't know if you can see it. Along with a handwritten thank you and a bunch of things in between. There's a, a big variety of rewards on there if you want to find out how you can support this channel and get some cool stuff in return. So please go check that out. I'd really appreciate it. All right. Got to take a shower quickly, get ready for the next stream in about an hour and a half or so. 
And I will be back in about 90 or 80 minutes with part two of the Danica double live stream videos for today. All right, thanks guys for watching. See you later. Peace. Bye.